Delta is an American versatile family of expendable launch systems that has provided space launch capability in the United States since 1960. There have been more than 300 Delta rockets launched, with a 95% success rate. Only the Delta IV remains in use as of 2019. Delta rockets are currently manufactured and launched by the United Launch Alliance. Topic: Delta Origins. The original Delta rockets used a modified version of the PGM-17 Thor, the first ballistic missile deployed by the United States Air Force as their first stage. The Thor had been designed in the mid-1950s to reach Moscow from bases in Britain or similar Allied nations, and the first wholly successful Thor launch had occurred in September 1957. Subsequent satellite and space probe flights soon followed, using a Thor first stage with several different upper stages. The fourth upper stage used on the Thor was the Thor Delta. Delta being the fourth letter of the Greek alphabet. Eventually the entire Thor Delta launch vehicle came to be called simply, Delta. NASA intended Delta as, an interim general purpose vehicle, to be, used for communication, meteorological, and scientific satellites and lunar probes during, 60 and, 61. The plan was to replace Delta with other rocket designs when they came online. From this point onward, the launch vehicle family was split into civilian variants flown from Cape Canaveral which bore the Delta name and military variants flown from Vandenberg Air Force Base which used the more warlike Thor name. The Delta design emphasized reliability rather than performance by replacing components which had caused problems on earlier Thor flights, in particular the trouble-prone inertial guidance package made by AC Spark Plug was replaced by a radio ground guidance system, which was mounted to the second stage instead of the first. NASA made the original Delta contract to the Douglas Aircraft Company in April 1959 for 12 vehicles of this design. Stage 1 – Modified Thor IRBM with a block IMB3 engine producing 152,000 lbf thrust. LOX, RP-1 turbopump, gimbal-mounted engine, two verniers for roll control, Stage 2 – Modified Able. Pressure-fed UDMH, nitric acid-powered Aerojet AJ-10 118 engine producing 7,700 lbf 34 This reliable engine cost $4 million to build and is still flying in modified form today. Gas Jet Attitude Control System. Stage 3 – Altair. A spin stabilized via a turntable on top of the able at 100 revolutions per minute by two solid rocket motors before separation. One ABLX 248 solid rocket motor provided 2,800 lbf 12 kilonewtons of thrust for 28 seconds. The stage weighed 500 pounds (230 kilograms) and was largely constructed of wound fiberglass. These vehicles would be able to place 650 pounds (290 kilograms) into a 150 to 230 miles (240 to 370 kilometers) LEO or 100 pounds (45 kilograms) into GTO. Eleven of the twelve initial Delta flights were successful and until 1968, no failures occurred in the first two minutes of launch. The high degree of success achieved by Delta stood in contrast to the endless parade of failures that dogged West Coast Thor launches. The total project development and launch cost came to $43 million, $3 million over budget. An order for 14 more vehicles was made before 1962.
Topic: Thor Delta flights. Topic: Delta evolution. Topic: Delta A. MB3 Block II engine, 170,000 lbf, 760 kilonewtons versus 152,000 lbf, 680 kilonewtons, 13. EPE2, 14. EPE3. Topic Delta B. Upgraded AJ-10 118D upper stage, three-foot tank stretch, higher energy oxidizer, solid state guidance system. Delta program goes from interim to operational status. 200 pounds, 91 kilograms to GTO 15. The 13th of December 1962. Relay 1, second NASA communications satellite, NASA's first active one. 16. The 13th of February 1963, Pad 17B. Syncom 1, Theocol Star 13B solid rocket as apogee kick motor. 20. July 26, 1963. Syncom 2, geosynchronous orbit, but inclined 33 degrees due to the limited performance of the delta. Topic <laughs> Delta C. Third stage Altair replaced with Altair 2. Its engine having been developed as the ABLX 258 for the Scout vehicle, 3 in 76 mm longer, 10% heavier, but 65% more total thrust sample mission, OS-04. <laughs> Delta D Also known as thrust augmented Delta, a Delta C with the thrust augmented Thor core plus three Castor 1 boosters 25. The 19th of August 1964. Syncom 3, the first geostationary communications satellite. 30. The 6th of April 1965. Intelsat I. Topic Delta E. Also known as Thrust Augmented Improved Delta 1965 100 pounds 45 kilograms more to GTO than Delta D Caster 2 versus Caster 1 boosters same thrust longer duration MB3 Block 3 core engine 2000 lbf 8.9 kilonewtons more thrust AJ-10 118E second stage widened from 2.75 feet (0.84 meters) to 4.58 feet (1.40 meters) diameter. Double burn time. Additional helium tanks allow for almost unlimited restarts. Two available third stages, Altair II or FW4D, the latter caused the delta to be known as a Delta E1. New payload fairing from a Gina First Delta E. The 6th of November 1965, launch Geos 1. Topic <laughs> Delta F. This launch vehicle was not built. Topic <inaudible> Delta G. Two-stage vehicle Delta E without third stage. 
only used for two launches, Biosatellite 1 on 14 December 1966 and Biosatellite 2 on 7 September 1967. Delta J Used larger Theocol Star 37D motor as third stage. Only one launch Explorer 38 of this configuration on 4 July 1968. Delta K This launch vehicle was not built. Topic Delta L introduced extended long tank first stage eight feet two four meters diameter throughout. Used the United Technologies FW four D motor for third stage. Topic Delta M. Three stage configuration Long tank Thor MB33 engine augmented with three caster two boosters, Delta E second stage Star 37D burner two for third stage Apogee kick motor. There were twelve successful Delta M launches from 1968 until 1971. Topic Delta N Two stage configuration Long tank Thor MB three three engine augmented with three caster two boosters, Delta E second stage. There were six successful Delta N launches from nineteen sixty eight until nineteen seventy two. Topic Super Six Delta M or Delta N with three additional caster two boosters, maximum configuration. These were designated as either M6 or N6. One launch of the M6 configuration, Explorer 43 Imp H Magnetospheric Research, on the 13th of March 1971. Three launches of the N6 configuration, one failure 1970-1971. 1,000 pounds 450 kilograms to GTO. Topic: <laughs> Launch reliability. From 1969 through 1978 inclusive, Thor Delta was NASA's most used launcher, with 84 launch attempts. Scout was the second most used vehicle with 32 launches, NASA used it to launch its own satellites, and also to launch satellites for other government agencies and foreign governments on a cost-reimbursable basis. 63 of the satellites NASA attempted to launch were provided by other parties. Out of the 84 attempts there were 7 failures or partial failures 91.6% successful. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Delta numbering system. In 1972, McDonnell Douglas introduced a four-digit numbering system to replace the letter naming system. The new system could better accommodate the various changes and improvements to Delta rockets and avoided the problem of a rapidly depleting alphabet. It specified 1 the tank and main engine type, 2 number of solid rocket boosters, 3 second stage letters refer to engine, not earlier letter system, and 4 third stage. This numbering system was to have been phased out in favor of a new system that was introduced in 2005. In practice, this system has never been used. Uh, 
Topic Delta 904. The long tank Thor, a stretched version of the Thor missile. First use of nine strap on boosters for Landsat 1 launch on July 23, 1972. First use of new uprated Delta F second stage using Aerojet AJ 10 118F engine. This Thor Delta model was designated the 904. Topic Delta 1000 series, nicknamed Straight Eight, extended long tank with eight foot diameter, 2.4 meters payload fairing, nine caster two strap on solid boosters. The first successful 1000 series Thor Delta launched Explorer 47 on September 22, 1972. Introduction of McDonnell Douglas Delta P second stage using TRW TR201 engine. Payload capacity increased to 1,835 kilograms (4,045 pounds) to Leo or 635 kilograms (1,400 pounds) to GTO. Topic: Delta 2000 series. Features new Rocketdyne RS-27 main engine on extended long tank. Same constant 8-foot diameter. Delta 2910 boosters were used to launch both Landsat 2 in 1975 and Landsat 3 in 1978. First time three satellites NOAA-4, Intersat, and AMSAT Oscar-7 launched simultaneously on Delta 2310 model — November 15, 1974. A Delta 2914 was used 7 April 1978 to launch the Japanese BSE broadcasting satellite, also known as Yuri-1. Topic Delta 3000 series introduced upgraded caster IV solid motors, same first stage as 1000 and 2000 series. Introduced PAM payload assist module, Star 48B solid fueled kick motor, later used as Delta 2 third stage. The Delta 3914 model was approved for launching U.S. government payloads in May 1976. The Delta 3914 model was launched 13 times between 1975 to 1987. Last Delta series to use the MCD Delta P second stage with TRW TR201 engine. Topic Delta 4000 series. The Delta 4000 and 5000 series were produced after the Challenger accident and consisted of a combination of 3000 era and Delta II era components. A total of three were launched in 1989 and 1990. The 4000 series used old MB3 main engine on extended long tank with upgraded caster EVA motors. Used new Delta K second stage. Only launched two missions. <laughs> Delta 5000 series Featured upgraded caster EVA motors on extended long tank first stage with RS-27 main engine. Only launched one mission. Topic: <laughs> Delta II series. 
The Delta II series consists of the retired Delta 6000 and Delta 7000, with two variants light and heavy of the latter. <laughs> Delta 6000 series When in 1986 the Challenger accident demonstrated that Delta launches would continue, the Delta II was developed. Introduced extra extended long tank first stage. Twelve additional feet provide more propellant. Introduced caster EVA boosters. Six ignite at takeoff, three ignite in flight. Topic. Delta 7000 series Introduces RS-27A main engine, modified for efficiency at high altitude, at some cost to low altitude performance. Introduces GEM-40 graphite epoxy motor solid boosters from Hercules now Alliant. Besides being longer, their lighter casings allow higher payload capability. Topic: Delta II Med Light. A 7000 series with no third stage and fewer strap-ons, often three, sometimes four. Usually used for small NASA missions. Topic: Delta II Heavy. A Delta II 792X with the enlarged GEM 46 boosters from Delta III. Topic Delta III 8000 series, a McDonnell Douglas Boeing developed program to keep pace with growing satellite masses. The two upper stages, with low performance fuels, were replaced with a single cryogenic stage, improving performance and reducing recurring costs and pad labor. Engine was a single Pratt & Whitney RL-10, from the Centaur upper stage. The hydrogen fuel tank, 4 meters in diameter in orange insulation, is exposed, the narrower oxygen tank and engine are covered until stage ignition. Fuel tank contracted to Mitsubishi, and produced using technologies from Japanese H-2 launcher. To keep the stack short and resistant to crosswinds, the first stage kerosene tank was widened and shortened, matching the upper stage and fairing diameters. Nine enlarged GEM 46 solid boosters attached. Three have thrust vectoring nozzles. Of the three Delta III flights, the first two were failures and the third carried only a dummy inert payload. Topic Delta IV 9000 series. As part of the Air Force's EELV Evolved Expendable Launch Vehicle program, McDonnell Douglas Boeing proposed Delta IV. As the program implies, many components and technologies were borrowed from existing launches. Both Boeing and Lockheed Martin were contracted to produce their EELV designs. Delta IVs are produced in a new facility in Decatur, Alabama. First stage changed to liquid hydrogen fuel. Tank technologies derived from Delta III upper stage, but widened to 5 meters. Kerosene engine replaced with Rocketdyne RS-68, the first new, large liquid-fueled rocket engine designed in the U.S. since the Space Shuttle main engine in the 70s. Designed for low cost, has lower chamber pressure and efficiency than the SSME, and a much simpler nozzle. Thrust chamber and upper nozzle is a channel wall design, pioneered by Soviet engines, lower nozzle is ablatively cooled. Second stage and fairing taken from the Delta III in smaller Delta IV medium models, widened to 5 meters in medium plus and heavy models. Medium plus models have two or four GEM 60 60-inch diameter solid boosters. 
Revised plumbing and electric circuits eliminate need for a launch tower. The first stage is referred to as a common booster core (CBC). A Delta IV heavy attaches two extra CBCs as boosters. Topic: <laughs> Delta IV heavy. The Delta IV Heavy Delta uses two additional CBCs as boosters. These are strap-on boosters which are separated earlier in the flight than the center CBC. The initial demonstration flight on December 21, 2004 was a partial failure, due to the premature cutoff of CBCs. The DEMOSAT reached incorrect orbit and the three CS satellites entered orbit at a height of only 105 km, which led to a rapid decay. The cause of the problem was a premature first stage LOX depletion sensor signal that resulted when LOX cavitation occurred in the LOX feedline. The LOX feedline – sensor design was modified and the problem did not recur on subsequent Delta IV heavy missions. Features a stretched 5-meter composite payload fairing. An aluminum trisector three -part fairing derived from the Titan IV fairing is also available. This was first used on the DSP-23 flight. First successful launch from Space Launch Complex 37 at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station on November 11, 2007. First successful launch from Vandenberg Air Force Base's Space Launch Complex 6 on January 20, 2011. On August 28, 2013 a Delta IV Heavy was launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base's Space Launch Complex of the National Reconnaissance Officers the top-secret NROL-65 payload successfully into orbit https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch question mark v equals gl1 debs 6 vyc in December 2014, the Delta IV Heavy was used to launch an uncrewed test flight of the Orion multi-purpose crew vehicle, designated F-1. A Delta IV Heavy was used to launch the Parker Solar Probe mission on August 12, 2018. This Delta IV Heavy launch implemented the Star 48B V third stage, Delta 9255H, the first use of a third stage on a Delta IV. Topic. See also Comparison of orbital launchers families Comparison of orbital launch systems List of Thor and Delta launchers Holovid Contribution to space debris Project ECHO